Hey everybody, welcome back to Plum Figgy. This is Tammy. Okay, so I want to work on this uh, journal again. Um, and like I mentioned in the last uh, time we worked in this one, uh, you know, I think I'm going to put a playlist together for this one too. <laughs> I got a lot of playlists going on, but um, I think it'll be helpful um, if I go ahead and do that. Okay, so um, yeah, so like I was just saying, uh, in the last video, I had decided that I'm going to go ahead and take out this, uh, center block, the block, the block of papers because my poor gluing job <laughs> just was not up to snuff. Um, and so, um, here, I'm going to move you just a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit there. Okay. A little more centered to me. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to uh, walk you through that process today. Um, also, um, I showed you just a quick view of some of the papers that I had picked out that I wanted to use. So uh, I thought we would put together some signatures. Um, and... I guess decide how big of a spine uh, this book is going to have and maybe start building that part of it today too. To be honest with you, I haven't really thought through <laughs> exactly what I want to do um, today in this video. So I think what we'll do is let, let me start with the signatures because I'll need to know how thick of a spine I'll need um, or want. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have too many papers here, but, uh, let's go ahead and start with that. Okay. So what I did, um, is I just removed all the white edges around the outside perimeter. Unfortunately, my laser printer doesn't allow me to print the full page. There's always a border. So that's always a process for me. So I literally, that's all I did. And then um, folded them in half. And then I have them grouped by kind of a type. So these are, you know, lined papers, grid, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I guess this one, tea dyed paper. Um, so having said that, I've got some that are kind of the same style all kind of right together here. So I think what I'll do is kind of mix these in. Um, do every other one because it'll just make it quicker and easier to create signatures this way. Um, so we'll put one there and we'll put one on the bottom and then we can start with this one. Okay, or actually I'm just going to stick this somewhere in the middle too. How about right there? Okay, so the process will make more sense in just a minute. <laughs> um, but actually let me pull you up just a little bit. That way you can see more of what's going on. So you don't really need to see details necessarily. And I'll pull this off because I'm sure it's going to be annoying. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I'll just remember that I can't go beyond that line. <laughs> okay, so let's put these off to the side. And here is our next pile. This is just the... Uh, the watercolory pastel ones. So, um, uh, these are kind of just kind of like the lined and graphed one, graph ones, but these have more words on them. Um, so there's a few of those. These are the really cool chippy paint and other background, um, kinds. Um, and then on the inside, I think I did, yeah, I did other digitals on the insides. So there's just different various other kinds of paper on the inside. So let's put those there. These are, what are these? Robin, Robins? Um, yeah, script. Other various patterns and designs. So we'll put those here. Um, these are the wallpapery kind, wallpaper style. And then these are all the ones that are kind of ledger. Um, I guess maybe this one should probably be in that pile. These are all the ledger and kind of writing. Uh, 
Honestly, maybe these could be in the same. Maybe these could be in the same group. Let me mix some of these in together. So the reason I do it this way is because when I'm building my signatures, um, I find that it's a little bit easier to group things this way. Um, and then that way I can just grab and pull from whatever pile I need to pull from. Um, and it just kind of makes it a little faster for me. And um, kind of like an assembly line in a way. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it just, um, for me, it just helps me kind of get my brain organized and um, I just am able to more easily pick and choose. So, okay, so um, I try to stick to eight uh, pages in each signature. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm literally just, um, to be honest with you, I might just go right down the line and when I hit eight pages, I'll stop. Actually though, let me, well, no, I'm going to do that afterwards. Um, I'm going to do that afterwards. Uh, I wanted to add maybe if there's room, <laughs> I think I'm going to have too thick of a, a book at this point, but I wanted to add some other just tea dyed papers, but that were like smaller in size. Um, Kind of throughout the book. So let me create the uh, eight page signatures first and then I can kind of go from there. So um, I want my first page to be a nice, nice, welcoming, interesting um, page. So I'll start here and I think I'll just go in a backward circle for this one. So we've got one, two, Three. And as I'm doing this, I'm keeping track of kind of where um, they are sitting in relation to each other. Four, five. If I had some that were bigger or smaller is what I mean. Six. And I don't know if this is upside down or not. I think, I think that's upside down. I think this is right side up. Six. I forgot what count. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so there's signature one. I like that. And then I just put it down upside down like this, and I just keep going that way. So um, the next, the next one. Okay, so then the other thing is I have this down here and I'm kind of looking at what are my next pages available to pick from and what might go well with this page or not clash with it. So like this one would go well. I wouldn't want to do this one um, or this one. You can't see that. Let me pull it down. I wouldn't want to do this one. I just don't think that the two would go well together. Uh, this would be another really good choice. Um, Possibly even this one, but then this one, these two together are a bit too busy for me. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about now. So I'm actually going to choose this one. And so I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, go backwards, <laughs> backwards circle, um, counting to eight. Um, and we'll just keep going that way. So two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. So that's going to be another really fun one. Okay, so this one's pretty, pretty tame. Honestly, pretty much any one of these would go well. I'm kind of leaning towards this one, to be honest. Um,. Probably don't want to do another one like like the ledger next to it, but you know what? I could also do that. Also, this the color of these two, they're not bad, but again, I think I probably wouldn't do this one. So let me see here. I kind of like this one, so I'm gonna start with this one. So one, two, three. Do this one down a little bit. 
four and that one up. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Now, again, we're in a situation where this one's pretty, <laughs> pretty well out there. I think I'm going to start with, actually, I'm going to switch to a taller one. I think, yep, we'll go with this. So one, two, three, four, what's on the other side? Okay. Five. Seven, and I'm actually going to pick from this pile instead because there's more um, here. So eight. Okay, so we've already got four signatures. <laughs> I didn't really want to do much more than five, maybe six. Um, and as you can tell, oh, I've got a lot of papers I still want to use for sure. So... I think I'm going to pick more from down here, maybe some there, and obviously this one, and maybe not as many of the ledger. Um, so, uh, yeah, because I've got a whole lot more wallpaper that I want to do. Oh, and I need to kind of mix these around a little bit too. Um, and when I'm all done, I'll probably go back through and... Um, yeah, I really like this one. I definitely want to use this one in my journal somewhere. Um, same with this one, to be honest. Well, yeah. Okay, so we'll go, we'll go from here. To be honest with you, I might be I might be making two journals. <laughs> you knew that was gonna happen. I always I always pick too many things. <laughs> Uh, too many papers. Okay, so I think I want to start with this one. So we'll start here. So one, two, three, four, come here, five, <laughs> Maybe not that one. Seven. And maybe not this. Eh, maybe not that one. Eight. Okay. So that one changed styles real quick there. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. I think I want to start the next signature with this. So we've got five signatures here. I think this needs to be the last signature for sure. Um, okay, so one, two, three. Do I like those colors though? I don't know if I do. Three, four. This one, yeah, I like that. This one's pretty stark white, so whatever's next to that one is gonna be interesting. Okay, so okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is, I want to see how thick this spine is. So, this, the, <laughs> 
So it's an inch and a half already. Um, and the way I tell that is I just lay them down and I don't squish them, but I kind of just let them be the way that they would be and hold up the two sides and just kind of see. So with these being an inch and a half, um, I would want my spine to be at least two inches wide. For me, that's pretty darn thick spine. And especially for um, a, a book of this size with kind of a smaller stature, it feels even small. It feels even bigger. <laughs> so, um, hmm. Well, okay, let me go ahead and I'm going to keep building signatures. And like I said, I think I'm going to have <laughs> more than one book here. So um, I'll just remember that uh, these were my initial picks. And I might go back through this and kind of fussy change things out. So let me put these back where they were. I'm going to put this one last. And let's see how many more signatures we can get out of this. Um, and maybe we'll just have a better even number to kind of work with then. Okay, so now I have mostly ledger. Um, so I'm actually going to move these down here. I've only got two of these left. There's some of these, um, about the same amount of these and four of these. So I'm going to, it'll be heavy on the ledger. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So there's that one. Now let's pick this one. So these two will look fine next to each other. One. Actually. Oh, I really like that. Two. Or what if we did this? No, I like the first one better. Two. And I'm going to rearrange these. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So, I think I've got enough probably for one more signature. Um, I'm going to start... This one. One. Ooh. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> that one actually kind of was a misprint. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Ooh. Um. <laughs> shoot. What am I going to put with this? Okay. Well, now here's where we need some um, neutral. <laughs> Need a little bit of neutral. Okay. So I'm going to go into my tea dyed paper stash. Actually, I already have a few pieces folded and ready to go. Um, yeah. I think those were for other projects. I'm going to throw this weird one in that I added that fabric to. So throw that one in there. Okay, so, and I think I've got more here than I need as well, but we'll have those to work with. Okay, so this one definitely needs something to tone it down, and so I'm going to go into this little stash over here and find something um, that might work well. So... The thing is, it kind of needs... Oh, I didn't grab what I thought I grabbed. Okay, sorry. Hold on. 
need a bigger piece. Here we go. This is what I need. Put a few of these out. these in half so that they're ready to go. Okay, so actually I think I like the designs of this one. So my goal here was to pretty much cover um, this entire page on both sides so that whatever page I put here next doesn't need to match with the purple. And the purple can just be fabulous all on its own. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got, I think, two each left of each of these. Um, so, it doesn't really matter what I pick now. There's three, four, five, six, um, yeah, seven, and eight, and I'm going to go ahead and just add this last one here as number nine, so we'll move that up, just, actually, this is going to be too big for the Reader's Digest anyway, so I don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so we've got one, two, three. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we take this one and put it in here with this one, hmm, I'm trying to decide what order I might want. Maybe start with this one. Not that it really matters all that much. And then, okay. So, at this point, let me see how big of a spine this one's going to be. Okay, so we're at an inch now. Let's see about this one. The other thing I can do about an inch and a quarter um, is weigh these down for a few days with some heavy books, and that will really help. And actually, I'll do that anyway, um, because right now they're kind of really poofy from being... Um, not weighed down. <laughs> the papers are still poofy from being tea dyed. So, and then dried, you know, air dried. So, okay. So at this point, I think I'm pretty well happy with the papers that I've got. Um, so now I need to measure and, um, honestly, so this is four signatures. I think I might go find some more papers um, and add a fifth signature here. Um, so I'll just leave these off to the side and I'll work on that separately. So right now let's just uh, keep our focus on this one. So, okay, so we have about an inch and a quarter of a width of our paper. So I'm definitely going to do one and a three quarter inch spine, but honestly, I think I need to go to a two inch spine because um, I'm going to be adding a whole lot more paper and doing collages and all that kind of stuff, and we're going to have a gator mouth anyway. So I kind of want to give myself a little bit of extra room uh, there. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I like to measure uh, the front um, cover to get an idea of how big my or what my dimensions of my pages need to be because they'll need to be um, torn down just a bit so one way you could do it is open your book and measure from the middle to where the page ends and that is five and a quarter wide by let's see by seven and a quarter tall Hi, Oliver. So I could easily just, um, he thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> so I can easily then just take
take this block of papers and um, actually what I like to do is start with the first signature and then that way you have a base one to kind of go from. Here, let me pull it down just a little bit. So it was five and a quarter by, what did I say? Seven and a quarter? Five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Okay, so five and a quarter. Um, well, look at that, five and a quarter, just over. And for me, I kind of actually like when my pages kind of come out from the side a little bit, especially with the Reader's Digest. Plus, it gives you just a little bit more room to work on, too. Um, because for me, the Reader's Digest is almost a perfect size, but just a tiny bit too small. So, okay, so, but we do have an issue here. So, we've got seven and three quarters high. So I definitely need to take off um, half an inch from the top and bottom, um, or just from the top or bottom. Uh, so, all right, this a couple of these didn't um, cut quite straight, so I may come back and do those on my own. Um, I thought for sure that this page was gonna be too wide, so I'm gonna just rip this extra off. Um, because I don't really want that extra on there. And I'll just do that kind of carefully. Oops. Well, I guess, <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> Actually, that's fine. Okay. So, seven and a quarter inches high is what we need. And I like to rip mine... You know, you can do whatever you think you prefer, um, but I like the torn edge look, so I think, what do I need to do? I need to take off a quarter of an inch from both sides, so I think I'm going to take it off, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to use... My super grungy <laughs> board <laughs> that is just gross looking. Here, I'll use this side. It's less, it's less gross looking. <laughs> but I really, I need the quarter inch marks on here. This other, this one's nice for filming, but not so good for actual practical use. <laughs> so, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm lining up um, my signature along a straight edge here and then a straight edge sort of over here. Um, and that's going to help me to know how, how much to take off. And so this is just a little bit over a quarter of an inch over here. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm making too big of a deal about it. Um, so then I'm just grabbing a couple of pages at a time and tearing and holding my um, ruler down pretty tight. So I'll do that until I get to the middle and then I'll pull from the other direction. Okay. Unless they come off like this. Or I can pull all of them at then after a while. Yep, okay, so we're at the final page now. And for me, my fingers need about a quarter of an, quarter of an inch to do it this way. Um, other fingers might make an easier job of it, but I've found that I kind of need about a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, um, I would have to do it a different way. Okay, so I need to now measure from here. So yeah, we're at seven and a half inches. So actually I'm gonna scooch this over just a little bit. So I don't have to work around this thing here. Okay, so I need to take off another quarter of an inch. So I have my, this side and this side lined up with the grid line. So now I'm using this grid line to find about a quarter of an inch to take off grabbing a couple pieces of paper and doing it like this. It takes more time to do it this way for sure, but I just, I really like the end 
the end look better than straight straight edges so okay this side's this side's a little bit more tricky <laughs> your fingers get a little sore after a while too I, I won't lie <laughs> if you do if you do quite a few signatures like this but just take your time um, and you know I don't like I said I don't mind having the um, ragged edge Hmm. I'm trying to decide now. <laughs> or do I mind having the ragged edge? <laughs> Let's see. I can't give myself too much room here. Another thing I can do is turn this over. Mm, and go from this direction which I don't like doing too much but I can do it this way too okay because when they're farther from the top the ones that you need to rip it seems like they're harder to grab onto and rip there you go that's better Stubborn ones in the middle I can't grab onto. <laughs> yeah, because that one's just a little bit too short. Okay. seeing me walk, work through this little problem here. <laughs> I'm bound and determined to rip it. <laughs> and honestly, you don't have to rip them if you don't want to. Um, this is definitely an extra step that's not necessary. There we go. That's what I needed to grab a hold of. It was just a tiny bit shorter. Okay. So let's see. That was down. This was down. All right. So we've got signature number one. Um, should be the right size to fit inside, which it is. And actually, looking at this now, I think I could go just a smidge taller. So I think I'm going to do the rest of them at seven and a half inches wide. Um, and I might switch out the papers with this uh, in this one with other papers in there so that this one signature isn't obviously shorter than the rest of them. Um, just make it look a little bit nicer and uh, less obvious that I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them in the same way. Um, and I'll fast forward through that and um, meet you back here at the end of it. Okay, everybody. So um, we have our one, two, three, four, five signatures. Um, as I'm holding the, this first one up, I don't think it's so obvious that it's that much shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that one as it is. We've got a bit of a mess down here, but I actually really like it like that. Um, it's just definitely not torn perfectly. Um, and then I just decided to only tear off the ones, the bottom half, because I realized when I was tearing off the borders, I was tearing them anyway. So they already have that torn look. So now at this point, sorry, I need a drink of water. And, um, I did go through and clean up some of those other pages that, um, like this one where when I ripped around the edges, they didn't, for some reason, I think I ripped too many at a time. And so they ripped kind of crooked. Okay. So now at this point we need to remove our book block from our book. I definitely want to save this page and this page and that just because the flowers are cute. Um, I did say I wanted to use these as the end papers though. So 
Not sure how well that's going to look, but this is the first picture, or the first one. Hmm. And that's the last one. Boy, they don't, they don't look good together at all. Um, <laughs> well, I might, I might keep these and just incorporate them somewhere else in the journal. So, okay. When you're removing a book block, uh, or, you know, disassembling a, a book like this, um, well, first I need my exacto knife, which is not handy. Here it is. Okay. So take your exacto knife and you need to be really careful. So in my case, I'm getting rid of the spine altogether. So I really only want to keep the front and back pieces of book. Um, but let's pretend like I wanted to keep the spine intact and I just wanted to remove the pages. So to do that, what you would do is put your finger down there and very carefully line up your um, X-Acto knife and you're going to go parallel to this back page and just very carefully you're going to go down the spine like this. Now the reason we're doing it parallel is because if I went this way you're going to go straight through that spine right there and trust me I've done that enough to know that it's really easy to do. But now look we've got one side intact. I like to flip it upside down and I do the exact same thing on the other side. Now this side's easier because, or maybe not, it's easier maybe because you don't have to worry about uh, the other side getting in the way and you can stick your finger in a little more easily. I like having the sturdy, I like to rest my left hand on the actual cover and that gives me a little bit more stability. And as you can see, I'm holding the back of the book with my other fingers. Um, and I'm actually pushing down against the table. So that way my book is not kind of flopping all over the place. And if I find resistance, I'm not finding resistance right now. But if I do, I'm going to stop and go a little bit easier. This is not a race. Um, it'll come off. You just got to kind of ease it together or ease into it. You don't, you don't need to manhandle it. Um, when you do that, then you're going to have all kinds of holes and all kinds of messiness happening here. So not all of them are going to go that easily. I'm not going to lie. Um, some of them you do have to push a little harder or kind of work with a little bit. Um, but that's essentially what I do. So, all right. So, um, like I said, I don't need to keep uh, the spine, um, and really I don't need to keep these pages. I will go through and find any others that I might want to keep and use in a collage maybe, but uh, really I just wanted to keep the front and back and then a couple of these flowers were nice. So, Okay, so at this point I think what I'm going to do is again line up my left and bottom with my grid line here and then I'm going to take my ruler and flip it around and use the metal edge now because I'm going to use my exacto knife and I'm just going to line my ruler up with the side of the book and you could use scissors too but I tend to actually I'm going to keep that a little bit long I tend to prefer this method because it's just a bit straighter for me. I just don't cut very straight. I've got pressure here with my left hand. Um, don't press terribly hard here. I did it in two swipes. I could have, I should have probably not done it so quickly. Um, let me show you again. Uh, it's easier to do less pressure and do more swipes. You're going to get a cleaner result. Um, if you push too hard, and this this goes for when you're um, doing your pages too. Actually, let me just show you that. Let me pull these off. And we'll keep those. Since I'm showing you this stuff, I might as well show you everything, huh? <laughs> I mean, most of you may already know how to do this, but... For anybody that doesn't, um, I know it took me some practice and even still now I, so 
sometimes just am in a hurry and don't really think about it. But let's say you had a book, a block of pages that instead of ripping down the le uh, side, you wanted to have a straight edge like you have here. Um, so you would do this again. Um, I'm going to line up my ruler so there's like half an inch. The, the, the instinct is to push super hard on your X-Acto knife, really, really hard. You don't want to do that because for two reasons. The harder you push over here, the more pressure it's going to take to hold and keep everything steady because you're going to be super tense and tight. Um, and two, there's just no reason to do all of the pages all at one time like that. I mean, and the other thing is that's going to happen is you're going to veer off and you're going to have a cut that at the bottom is going to be all raggedy and not look good. So instead what you should do is have kind of a light hand, light but firm, and take take smaller or uh, less deep cuts and then w fl flick away what you've done and keep going. Okay. Now what you just saw my hand do was not good. See that? You got it? Ideally I wouldn't be using this ruler. I'd be using one that has kind of a grip on the bottom. Um, that, that helps too. And I'm kind of going at an angle into right now, but really I shouldn't be. I should just be going straight down. And so I'm getting rid of these pages here. Okay. We'll see how good of a job I do on this. I, would, I still, I need practice at this too. And to be honest with you, partly that's why I like to rip my pages instead of do it this way, because for me, ripping the pages actually takes longer. <laughs> this is still a little bit more frustrating. Um, but you see, I'm just kind of doing a couple swipes at a time, getting rid of what what I don't need on the edge. Firm, but not super strong pressure on the right side. And eventually you'll get down to the bottom. This is kind of a thick block of paper to do. I don't know that I would normally do this many pages, so we'll see how how it turns out. But okay, and I can feel that I'm pretty much now cutting against my cutting mat. So I've only got a couple more cuts to make. And we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right. So I can already tell you the bottom is a little bit curved. Yep. But actually it's not too bad. <laughs> this got a little wonky up here. But um other than that, um yeah, and we got a little bit of cleanup down there. So if that happens, then I would just take my scissors and clean that up because it's just Yep, just like that and then it's fixed. So there's a little tip for it. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> I forgot to take this off. Oh well. We still have enough of it. It'll be, I'll incorporate that into the book somehow. <laughs> so anyway, another fun little lesson, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let me get rid of this. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all these. Probably they would just go into the trash. Except for that one green. I'm going to keep that one. Okay. Actually, I'm going to clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so back to our cover. I think this was up, if I remember right. Doesn't say. Well, it has to be because that's the way. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to line up my left and bottom with my grid lines and then take my ruler. Oops, I just messed that up. Reline that back up. And take my ruler. Okay. 
and it's away. And it's a nice, clean, straight edge. And you know what? If your edge doesn't look this nice and clean, it's okay because, to be honest with you, we're going to be covering up the edge anyway with um, fabric. So, okay, so that's my front and my back. Now, I'm going to hold on to this because I want to keep these pieces, I think, and use them somehow. Oh, I think I have a sneeze again. Okay. So, now, I'm going to, I need my measurements from my book to know how tall I would need my spine to be. Your spine needs to be the exact same height as your front and back covers. So, I'm just going to line that up. And, of course, it's not an even... <laughs> Uh, what is that? Seven and five eighths? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seven and five eighths. Okay, so that's great. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Um, okay, so over here I've got just random um, thicker cardstock kind of stuff that I want to use um, to help build my spine. Some cardboard. Um, here's actually a good piece. So, and I just kind of hang on to this kind of stuff for this purpose. Um, I've also got, oh, here, we've got some, although I don't think these are going to be wide enough. Um, the other thing is, um, actually, I think I'll be able to make it work with these. I'm going to be layering these up. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. So we need 7 and 5 eighths high by 2 inches wide. Let me make sure that this is, oh, this is exactly 2 inches. So, perfect. Let's figure out where 7 and 5 eighths inches is on my <laughs> trimmer. Um, you guys can't see that at all. Okay. And I marked my 7 and a half to kind of help me. So... Actually, I'm just going to do it the easy way and visually figure out where it is. Like this. Okay. So it's that line. Oh, okay. So I'm literally not taking my eye off of it so I, can, I don't forget. And I'm just going to make a mark just above it with pencil so it's easy to find next time. Okay. Don't need that. So this is exactly the right size, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut these four down to the height at, as well, and then I'll cut them down to the width. So if any of you have ever bought a Happy Planner, you know that the cover paper is that really soft, almost glossy kind of paper. If you have a glossy kind of paper or something that you're not sure is going to stick super well with glue, um, I use my pokey tool and um, my pokey tool happens to have a very small little, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my fingernail hitting the little, it curves just barely at the end, which is kind of perfect because then I then I have a really good tool to score things with and so I I use this but um, if you have a tool that you can use to kind of score um, your paper or cardboard um, that you're using uh, it'll help your glue to stick and so I just make some lines going both directions and with this one I'm gonna have to do both sides because both sides are this weird glossy no, I'm not pushing hard enough that I'm going to go actually all the way through, so just be careful of that, I guess. Um, but I'm just making grooves so that my glue has something to go down into and stick to. Okay, so I'm going to do that with all four of these, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all four of these nicely... Um, marked up. Uh, they're not gonna, they're gonna stick together a lot easier. Now at this point, um, 
I'm actually going to use Fabri-Tac because I like how when this dries, it kind of adds sturdiness um, to the spine. So I want as much sturdiness as I can get because, you know, I've got a big enough block of papers that I know that um, it's just going to need it. So uh, what I'm going to do is this will be my base um, and then I'm going to glue these four together on top of this base. So I'm just going to start with this and add my glue. And I'm going to put the dark side down. I always want to hide the printing on the inside. Um, not that you're going to really see through this, but depending on how you finish your spine, I guess you could potentially. So, okay. And as that dries, like I said, it's going to stiffen up. And be sturdy. I'm just going to do the same thing with the rest of the pages or the pieces of paper. This part does tend to get a little bit messy. I find that the glue kind of seeps out, but then I'm not as super careful about um, keeping the glue from going too close to the edges either. <laughs> so maybe that's on me. <laughs> okay, so that one. Okay. We'll do this one next. Plus, I think tack, uh, fabri tack does a better job, maybe, of um, sticking to this glossier paper. To be honest with you, I think we could stop here, but I've already got this other one done, so... You don't want it too thick, but at the same time, you want it to be sturdy, so. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna stop here. Um, I'm sorry, but I can't film how I'm going to make my spine curved. Um, this is something that I learned from a Nick the Booksmith course. And I just don't feel right about showing that on video when, you know, she put the time in together to create a video course. And if you want to learn how to do that, um, it's not very expensive, her course. Um, I don't know the exact price, but it was less than $20. And it was invaluable to me. So if you're going to be making a lot of journals and that's something that you want to learn how to do, I would highly suggest going and looking her up I, on teachable.com um, and finding her course on that. Um, otherwise, I know there's other methods out there that I've seen on YouTube. Um, you can probably search um, how to do a curved spine or something like that or curved spine tutorial maybe um, and see what other, what other methods are out there. But um, as far as me filming this process, I'm sorry, but I'm, <laughs> I can't do that. Um, so, um, all right, so I'm going to do that part of it and, um, when that's dry, I'll come back and we'll kind of finish putting the book back together. Okay guys, so we've got a curvy spine, <laughs> um, and it's fairly well dry. I mean, it could still stand to dry a little bit more, but it's fairly well, it's pretty well there. Um, okay, so as I was looking for some fabric to cover the spine area with, I had a eureka moment and said, oh, I should make those cool ridges on my spine. So, went back and <laughs> found um, these pieces that I uh, threw away. And um, so I have two pretty much different sizes so we've got two, four of the skinnier ones and then um, four that were just a little bit wider. So I'm going to use this in the middle and then do a skinny band on the top and bottom. I don't know if that's what it's, if a book would normally look like, but eh, it's my book. I can do what I want. <laughs> 
So I need to um, cut these at two inches wide because that's how wide our spine is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these down. Oh, that might be a little bit tall. Well, we can, we can decide that later. If we need to change it, we can. Waste not, want not, right? <laughs> have less for the trash. Okay, and then these need to be two inches wide, and then I obviously need to take off that part of it. So, actually, let me take off two inches first. And then, how wide is this going to be? So that looks like it's about three quarters of an inch. Yep, three quarters of an inch wide. Okay, so um, for whatever reason, I had one fewer of these smaller strips, so I just decided to then, I'll have three of each, so now all I need to do is glue these together. Um, for these smaller ones, I don't know that I really need to score them. Maybe I will, just to make it, just to be sure, I'll just do a little bit of scoring. And then just glue them together. So I'll just do that and then I'll be right back. This is just freshly glued, so it's not really dry yet, um, but actually that might help. Um, Alright, so I need to figure out what my middle is in my spine, so I can make sure that these are placed in the right location. So my middle is here. I'm going to line that up with the line on my grid and draw a line just like that. Okay, so now I think I need to find the, this is just shy of two inches. It might be a little bit wide, but now I need to find the middle of this. Boy. I eyeballed that one pretty good. <laughs> I'd say the middle is right there. <laughs> okay. So, I just want to see how this is going to look with the other two lined up. Okay, so I need a little bit of help here to my line. I'm trying not to push this down too much because I don't want my my curved spine to not be curved anymore. <laughs> so this will need time to cure. Actually, overnight probably would be better. But okay, now let's see if I can line this up. Something like that, and then. We would put these on either side. Yeah, I definitely like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down and then we can figure out where the others will go after. Did 
This is something I'm not super experienced at, to be honest. I think I've only done it once <laughs> so far. So, um, just trying to remember what I did back then. <laughs> but if you want to know uh, how to do this from someone who's done it a lot more, um, Pam at the Paper Outpost, I think, is how I learned. Um, I'll try to find her video if I can and link it down below. Okay, so I want to line this up with this one. So now, yeah, see? Well, you know what? It's just for me. If it's not absolutely perfect, it's that's just fine. Okay, so... Here is our middle. I'm lining that up with my grid line. Okay, and then these are three quarters of an inch wide each. So I think I'm gonna put them at this grid line. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Mark my line. We'll do the same over here. So we've got half an inch in. And to be honest, I probably don't need to add a line, but it just kind of helps helps me remember and not screw it up. <laughs> really. <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to these and glue these down. And just hold that down for a second. Make sure the glue sticks. Okay. I'll line that back up with my middle line and do the exact same thing over here. And I'm just eyeballing this just to kind of get an idea, make sure it's where I want it to be, not move around like I just did. Um, and I'm just holding it down to make sure it stays. And I think at this point now, I need to let all this dry um, because the next step is going to be me having to kind of manipulate these. Um, when we add the fabric. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video, this part of it here, and we'll pick up the rest of it uh, in the next one. And so the next video is going to be me finishing assembling um, my book or the, the cover. And then um, I'm actually... Yeah, and then I'll uh, glue, and then we'll put the book block into the book, and we'll have a book ready to work in. <laughs> I was just trying to decide if I wanted to glue in my pages or not. <laughs> um, I may change my mind. I might do this as like a traveler's notebook style, which for me would be easier to work in because then I can pull pages in and out if I want to work on them that way instead of keeping them in the book. Um, like I said, I think this one's going to get chunky. So <laughs> um, I'll think a little bit more about that in, in the meantime. But all right. So 
there we have uh, the first part. Well, you've got a pretty good uh, chunk of how how a book a journal comes together <laughs> from uh, altering a book uh, in this way. So hope this was helpful and informative. And um, if you are already knew how to do this and just were watching just because, I hope you had a good time watching. <laughs> and I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.